right, folks, welcome to Sergeant Slide's YouTube channel. We're here in Stu's garage, and today um, we're going to be talking about fuel lines. First things first, uh, due to an unfortunate incident, the engine is out of the Miata, it's all taken apart. Um, some things happened. Don't worry, you guys are going to get the whole backstory, but for now, I just wanted to go ahead and get this video out. I'm um, having some issues editing and a new computer and all kind of other stuff. Don't worry, you guys, uh, we're going to catch up and we're gonna get back up to the speed of things. But for now, I wanted to talk about fuel lines and something that you could potentially have on your car that could potentially cause your car to burn down and people to get injured. And I don't want you guys to go through what I almost went through. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're gonna talk about fuel lines today. All right guys, so I have a couple of things here on my workbench and um, these basically represent the different types of fuel lines that you can have. First off is your rubber fuel line that you can get in the hardware store or the parts stores. Do not ever put this on your car, guys. Uh, this is good for your lawnmower. If you put this on your car, like, you're going to die. Like, I don't even know why you're watching this video. Don't use this stuff. This over here is actually brake line, but this represents what your OEM fuel lines look like. They're going to be metal tubes very similar to this one. They're just going to have a much larger diameter. So if you're replacing fuel lines or buying new fuel lines or whatever else, you can buy the OEM lines that are already bent. You can buy lines and bend them um, and all of that stuff, but it's going to look kind of like this. This is good to go. It's a more difficult route to go, probably a more expensive route to go, but metal fuel lines, they're good to go. Now. The two most common things that you're likely to come across in the aftermarket is going to be synthetic rubber fuel lines and your PTFE or Teflon um, fuel lines, and these are with the AN fittings. So dash six, dash eight, whatever you run in your car, dash 10, if you're really fast, um, whatever it is, these lines are made to fit with AN fittings. I absolutely love AN fittings. I love this stuff. Um, unfortunately, the way that this stuff is sold is very misleading and it can cause you to essentially burn your car down so let's talk about this stuff right here this is the stuff that you don't want to use guys this is called cpe or synthetic rubber and what it is is it's got you know your steel braided line which you're like ooh, steel braided it looks pretty and you know you can get this in the steel braided you can get in the black finish it doesn't matter but it's like this is super race car stuff it's going to make my car look cool and work really fast and it's super strong because it's braided right no um this cpe synthetic rubber um basically acts just like rubber when you look this stuff up in the advertisements it tells you that this stuff is aircraft rated and it's good for modern fuels and everything else like that i don't know if they say it's good for ethanol but basically ethanol is where you would want to draw the line and use E85 or ethanol rated lines but back to this stuff let's talk about the aircraft rating right first off aircraft rated does not mean that it's made to a higher standard than automotive rating um, on an aircraft your fuel lines are something that you change at a regular interval there's way more checks and maintenance that you do on, a, on an aircraft than you do on a car so I don't know what the interval is on an aircraft but if something like fuel lines is made for an aircraft and you're supposed to change your fuel lines every two years or so something like that so if something is made for an aircraft and it's made to be changed at a regular service interval and this thing is made to be changed out every two years or 200 hours or whatever the service interval is and car fuel lines like your metal lines are made to be on the car for the lifetime of the car um, aircraft rated doesn't necessarily means better it just means that it's okay for that application also aircraft fuels are leaded fuels and they do not contain ethanol so just because something is aircraft rated does not mean that it's good to go for your car. Now the problem with this is CPE claims to be safe for modern fuels and or ethanol. Um, but modern fuels have eth ethanol in them. So it doesn't matter if it's 10% or 5% or 1% or whatever. That ethanol content in modern gas is enough to ruin these fuel lines. Um, in my experience, now I've been running these fuel lines for a long time and I've been consistently having issues with these things. They normally work out for me for about a year and then they will spontaneously rupture unexpectedly. And um, normally where they break is at your highest points. So they tend to break on me in the springtime when I, after, you know, after the car is sat all winter and you start driving the car again, they'll either break uh, up here 
where your fuel line goes into your fuel injection system or they'll break back here at your fuel tank because your fuel line basically goes down and up. So the highest points is where basically your lines fill with air first. Your fuel will kind of sit down here at the bottom and then when your line is dry, it actually dries out. The alcohol or ethanol in these fuel lines will dry these lines out and then when they go dry, they get brittle and they crack and it only takes a few times for that to happen. So I think this fuel line right here was actually on my Mustang and uh, I was getting ready to drive it to work one day and the car was sitting and um, I left to let it warm up and I came back and fuel was just spraying out all over the place. The whole engine bay was drenching gasoline and uh, I'm really lucky that that car didn't burst into flames. That was actually my third time having a fuel line rupture in that car. Um, the first time it happened and I didn't really know why it happened or what happened, I changed out the fuel line. The second time it happened, um, I realized that something was wrong with the fuel lines that I had and that I should change those out. I actually went and bought the Teflon PTFE E85 rated lines and I was putting them together incorrectly because um, there's a different way that you put these AN fittings together and I'll compare those for you in just a second. I was putting it together wrong, I got really frustrated, I sent the stuff back, I got my money back and I was just like, maybe I'll have better luck next time, you know, buying the same stuff. And so, you know, third time's a charm. I'm just lucky I didn't burn my car down, guys. In the midst of that happening, before the third time, I did put those same lines on the Miata. And now that the motor is out and I have lots of space to work in, I'm gonna be taking these lines off of the Miata. I'm gonna set these off to the side. Um, now these lines are still cool to use if you have like an oil type system that you need to run. They're, they're safe for oil. They're safe for PCV breathers or any kind of other fluids that you need to run through them. You just don't want alcohol or ethanol or anything like that. That's gonna kill the rubber. So let's do a couple of comparisons. So first off, these lines are actually really easy to assemble. Uh, the AN fittings are really easy to put on. You can mix and match AN fittings. You can get them, you know, like buy separate AN fittings and they just work, they go on, they're really easy. With these lines right here, you need to use the AN fittings that come with these lines. They're really finicky. Um, also, for the PTFE, you see how the AN fittings, they have these flared collars at the end. The rubber lines don't have those flared collars. They just kind of come down flat just like that. So that's one way to tell apart if you just happen to be looking at them from the outside. Also, these are both 6AN lines, I think. And you can see that this line is actually much fatter than this line. So you get a little bit of a slimmer line out of the PTFE Teflon lines. The drawbacks with this line is they have a much larger bend radius. So you can't go around as tight of corners with these right here. Um, you can kink these lines really easily. So you just have to be really careful when you're putting these things together. But honestly, uh, you can get away with, with enough. I mean, you can get the job done with these things. Also, if you look up close at the mesh, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it's, it seems like this has a finer mesh on it than this. And uh, from what I've noticed is that's pretty much the same across the board. So there's your comparisons. There's a little bit of information about the lines. When in doubt, guys, just go with the plastic lines. You cannot get away from E85, ethanol, whatever it is, unless you only buy fuel from race shops or, you know, airports or things like that. And I actually know people who do that. But if you're buying pump gas, all it takes is one time and that's enough to ruin your lines. So don't be stupid. Do not put rubber lines on your car. I don't care, CPE, whatever they call it. This is a rubber line, guys, and you will burn your car down with this stuff. So just don't do it. And uh, that's pretty much it for this video. So stay tuned. I'll tell you about what happened to the Miata next time. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you.